When NASA was trying to resolve issues surrounding the Starliner spacecraft, it caused the Crew-9 mission to get delayed by a month. But that wasn't enough. The delay has even affected the schedule for SpaceX's first spacewalk. So what the heck is going on in the space industry these days? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. In the past, we were uncertain about the timeline for the first private spacewalk. The Polaris Dawn team has now officially launched the target launch date for this important mission, saying we are targeting no earlier than August 26 for the launch of Polaris Dawn. It's not just a coincidence that this announcement came right after the meeting between NASA and Boeing, where decisions were made regarding the fate of the Starliner and its two astronauts. While it is difficult to definitively say that the issues with Starliner are causing delays in other missions, that's exactly the reality. NASA's latest decision, August 7th, presents two main options to resolve the ongoing problems with a cursed Starliner spacecraft, the most viable option being to delay Dragon's launch for the Crew-9 mission. Initially planned for this month, the missions now pushed back to late September to take on responsibility of bringing the two Starliner astronauts back to Earth. To achieve this, Crew-9 mission will only include two astronauts instead of four, with Will Moore and Williams joining the augmentation crew on the space station and returning to Earth in February 2025. However, the interesting and somewhat ironic point about NASA and Boeing here is that the delay of Crew-9 is just a secondary measure to accommodate the testing and unreliability of Starliner's program. NASA and Boeing are continuing to sacrifice the time of two astronauts, keeping them on the station until at least mid-September to further investigate Starliner's issues. If NASA's engineers feel more comfy with the uncertainties regarding Starliner's thruster performance, the astronauts may return to Starliner. Looking back at all NASA's decisions, they remain stubbornly committed to Starliner, imagining they can trade anything to salvage the flight of the two astronauts, regardless of the delay of the Crew-9 and its potential impact on ISS operations. As for SpaceX, the company also has to adjust its upcoming schedules to align with these unexpected changes from the government agency. This causes some delays for the company, as launch contracts and schedules are typically planned well in advance. From this, we can see the limitations of space missions or work that involves government collaboration. That's precisely why the private sector market is booming these days and right now in a good position to continue making major contributions to the space industry. Player's Dawn mission, set to take place at the end of this month, is a standout example of entirely private collaboration. Although Starliner's issues have caused Crew 9 schedule to get delayed, Polaris Dawn has only been slightly affected, with a minimal shift about half a month from its original mid August target for this groundbreaking mission. But regardless of the timing, the mission's highly anticipated and incredibly important, not just for SpaceX and its sponsor Isaacman, but also for expanding humanity's footprint in space. Indeed, the Polaris Dawn mission is set to embark on a unique orbital path, beginning with an initial launch into elliptical orbit ranging from 190 to 1,200 kilometers above Earth. This trajectory is just the starting point as the mission will perform orbital maneuvers to gradually hit an altitude of 1,400 kilometers. This will mark the furthest distance that humans have traveled from the Earth since Apollo 17 missions back in 1972. This ambitious mission will be a record-breaking milestone in terms of distance. By venturing to this higher altitude, Polaris Dawn will expose its crew and spacecraft to a stronger radiation environment, providing valuable data on radiation exposure, and that's crucial for future deep space missions. Moreover, the mission will be pioneering the use of SpaceX's Starlink satellite network for in-space communication. The crew will rely on this advanced system for seamless communication between the spacecraft and ground control, utilizing Starlink's laser communication technology to maintain a reliable link. This will be a critical test of Starlink's capabilities in supporting long-duration missions and high-altitude operations potentially laying the groundwork for future commercial and exploratory missions beyond Earth's orbit. To accomplish this mission, a specially designed spacesuit is indispensable. Therefore, with Polaris Dawn mission, SpaceX will feature the debut of new EVA or extravehicular activity suits. And these are designed specifically for spacewalks in the challenging environment of LAL. These suits represent a significant evolution from the intravehicular activity IVA suits that are typically worn by astronauts inside the spacecraft that are primarily designed for comfort 
comfort and protection in case of cabin depressurization. Unlike IVA suits, EVA suits need to endure the harsh conditions of outer space, providing life support, thermal regulation, and protection from micrometeoroids and radiation. SpaceX's EVA suits are equipped with advanced mobility features, allowing astronauts to move more freely while working outside the spacecraft. These suits also feature a robust life support system, including oxygen supply and carbon dioxide removal to sustain astronauts during prolonged spacewalks. One of the primary technical challenges in designing these EVA suits was ensuring they could withstand the vacuum of space while still being lightweight and flexible enough for astronauts to perform intricate tasks. Innovations include improved materials for thermal insulation, enhanced helmet visor technology for better visibility, and gloves that allow for fine dexterity. During the spacewalk, the process of suit pressurization and depressurization will be carefully managed to ensure astronaut safety. The crew will first transition from the spacecraft's cabin to an airlock, where they will don the EVA suits. The suits will then be pressurized to create a safe environment for the astronauts. After conducting the necessary checks, the airlock will be depressurized, allowing the astronauts to exit into space. Upon completion of the spacewalk, the reverse process will be carried out, gradually repressurizing the airlock and transitioning the crew back into the cabin. Another important component of the EVA suit is the helmet and visor, which have been newly designed with advanced features to ensure the safety and efficiency of astronauts both inside the spacecraft and during spacewalks. The visor is a critical component, offering a combination of protection and visibility. It's constructed from specially coated materials that shield the astronaut's eyes from the intense sunlight and harmful radiation encountered in space, while still providing a clear, unobstructed view of the surroundings. This protective layer also helps prevent the visor from fogging up, which is crucial for maintaining visibility during complex tasks. The visor's functionality is adaptable to different environments. Inside Inside the capsule, it can be adjusted to reduce glare from the onboard lighting and electronic displays, ensuring that the astronauts can clearly see their instruments and surroundings. When outside the vacuum of space, the visor automatically adjusts to the extreme brightness of direct sunlight and the darkness of the shadowed side of Earth helping astronauts maintain visibility regardless of the lighting conditions. The helmet itself is equipped with a range of capabilities designed to enhance astronaut performance and safeties. One of the standout features is the heads-up display, which provides vital information directly onto the visor. This allows astronauts to monitor their suit status, get mission updates, and even view navigational aids without having to look down at a handheld device or screen. This hands-free access to data is especially valuable during spacewalks, where the astronauts need to keep their hands free to perform tasks. On top of that, the helmet includes communication systems that enable clear audio contact with the spacecraft and mission control, as well as integrated environmental controls to regulate temperature and air circulation within the suit. These combined features make the helmet and visor a truly remarkable component of the EVA suit. All these elements have been meticulously prepared by SpaceX for the upcoming spacewalk. The new suit design was unveiled on SpaceX's website and social media channels about two months ago, demonstrating the company's thorough preparation for the mission and its related components. Let's wait for the mission. We're sure to get an up-close look at what marks a significant milestone for the entire space industry. Awesome. However, some may argue that this is not truly a record, noting NASA astronauts regularly conduct spacewalks, so this accomplishment may not be seen as exceptionally unique. In fact, for astronauts from NASA and other space agencies at the ISS, spacewalks are a critical part of the job while spending time up there in orbit. And since well-trained pros have been walking in space since the 60s, casual space industry observers can easily shrug off a spacewalk as a run-of-the-mill event, like the window washers dangling from a Manhattan skyscraper or a roofer in a safety harness repairing the shingles on a house. Although a spacewalk may seem like a graceful and silent ballet, there are undeniable risks when venturing into the vacuum of space, while protected from temperature swings from 250 and minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit by a little more than a tether and really expensive clothing.
Walking in space is one of the most dangerous things astronauts have to do, but oftentimes it is necessary. We wouldn't have built the space station without doing spacewalks, former astronaut James Voss told me. And during his career, Voss logged 22 and a half hours in total during spacewalks and set the record with his colleague Susan Helms for the longest ever spacewalk in March 2001. Voss was so focused on his task that he didn't realize he'd been out there for nearly nine hours. I had no idea, he said. Spacewalks have a remarkably safe track record despite their evident danger. Astronauts on spacewalks put on a tether suit outside the space station that feels like a retractable dog leash, said Nicole Stott, whose 2009 spacewalk lasted a little over six and a half hours. If the tether were to snap, astronauts have a jetpack that could glide them safely back to the space station. On Earth, astronauts trained using the jetpack in virtual reality. You don't want to use that in real life, Stott said. Astronauts extensively train in a pool at the Neural Buoyancy Laboratory in Houston to mimic the conditions of space. Unexpected problems still do crop up. For instance, there's the issue of how to make sure your power drill doesn't float away. But Polaris Dawn's soon-to-be astronauts have been traveling, too. Since May 2022, the crew have undergone ample training in skydiving and diving with the U.S. Air Force Academy, zero-gravity flight, and fighter jet piloting, similar to NASA astronauts. And that's not including the training for specific jobs and experiments that each crew member will run on a mission. During a spacewalk, there are handrails and many tethers for every tool and workstation an astronaut stops at. There's no weight in space, but the mass of the suit does drag on the body, and that slows the astronaut down. It makes their movements intentional, but still slow. Things take longer when you do it in a spacesuit, Voss said. Polaris Dawn, if successful, is a small but significant step towards Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and other space enthusiasts' visions of regular civilians, not just elite astronauts, one day living and working in space. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.